Hey, what's up, cats and kittens? And shout out to all my cerebralize. It is she, the cerebral diva, and she is back and officially in the building with a brand new video. Um, and this is gonna be an episode of You Say What? Um, just something I want to get off my chest. Um, a recent story that I heard about, and I felt compelled to come and talk to you guys. Um, and this story is about Lil Nas X versus Pastor Troy. Now I know some of you might need a minute to go research. Pop his name into the Google search engine to figure out who Pastor Troy is. Um, to, to my knowledge, I don't believe he's an ordained minister, even though he calls himself a, a pastor. Um, but anyway, probably is, doesn't even know what seminary school is. But nonetheless, Pastor Troy is a has-been rapper who is essentially calling Lil Nas X out for his attire. Um, in a recent post on Instagram, I believe it was, Pastor Troy says, um, well, and this is me paraphrasing. He says, well, I guess I'll never win a Grammy if I have to dress like Lil Nas X. And to that, I say this. I don't give a damn if you dress like Malcolm X. You are never going to win a Grammy. <laughs> it just wasn't in the cards for you, bro. Like, why are you hating on another man's success? Another black man's success? Shame on you for that. Whether they're gay, straight, bisexual, it's still your brother. Whether you want to acknowledge that or not, that is still your brother. And for you to feel compelled to diminish this man's success simply based on his attire. And let me tell you the killing part. <clears throat> if you pull up a picture, I'm going to try to actually post that picture in this video. Um, Pastor Troy is like wearing, <laughs> almost looks like a blouse while he's criticizing Lil Nas X for his attire. And I'm just like, the, the, the irony of it all is just mind boggling. And then he goes on to say something, um, and again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing people here. He goes on to say something like, um, he was at Applebee's with his son, and he saw a gay couple who were essentially showing each other public affection, and his son was like, F Applebee. And that's just so <laughs> You know what? Here's the thing, right? If you are going to let's say um, not patronize any business or boycott businesses that will allow gay people trans people bi people lgbtqia plus people um if you're going to boycott businesses that will not service that particular demographic then you may as well stay home <laughs> You may as well stay home. But I don't know where you're going to get your groceries from. I don't know where you're going to buy your clothes from. I don't know where you're going to get your cars from. Because businesses are in the business of making money. And the one thing that you must understand about the LGBTQIA plus demographic is that a lot of businesses appreciate that demographic more for this particular reason. The reason that businesses are going to forever cater to that demographic is because they simply have more disposable income, right? If you're um, gay, lesbian, bi, trans, what have you, for the most part, you're not having kids. And I say for the most part because there are exceptions to every rule. There are some people who are of the LGBTQIA ilk who still create families. But for the most part, Many of them don't. Um, a lot of them may create families through adoption, uh, surrogacy, um, through um, even just sort of the a ghetto adoption where you, you find someone who um, you are almost mentoring and you bring that person in. And in a lot of instances, those are how, that's how families are created within the, the confines of the LGBTQIA plus community. And so they don't create traditional families, but... Um, they don't necessarily have kids in a lot of instances, so they have more disposable income. They can go out to Applebee's more because they're not paying for college tuitions. Um, they're not paying for diapers and, and, and formula and, and medical bills and, you know, field trips and, you know, um, school uniforms and, you know, back to school supplies and all of the things that a lot of people who do have children will ultimately um, their, their, their disposable income will be mitigated by the fact that they've had children. So these businesses are going to patronize or going to pander to this particular community because they simply have more disposable income. So I say that to say that Pastor Detroit doesn't want to patronize businesses, i.e. Applebee's, because they, um, 
I don't even like to say the word allow because a gay couple was doing what humans do, going out for a bite to eat. Um, you somehow feel threatened or insulted by the fact that people are being themselves in public. If you don't like, public is for everyone. It's public. Look up the definition of public if you don't understand. Public is for everybody. When you go inside your house, you have the right to create whatever culture, whatever ecosystem you want to create within the confines of the four walls that you have purchased for yourself. Within your home, you can be as ignorant, as prejudicial, as hateful, as malignant as you choose to be. And no one really has the right to tell you to, to not be that. And when you go in public, you can still be those things, but keep your words, keep your hands and all of that to yourself. Because you're in public, you made a choice to go out and to be amongst the masses. And when you're amongst the masses, be prepared for anything. Because any and everything is out there in the world, um, including your ignorant ASS. <sighs> it just blows, my, it boggles my mind that here's Lil Nas X living his best life, right? Not bothering anybody. But... There, the, the bottom line is that Pastor Troy is envious of Lil Nas's success. He's envious because Lil Nas has success. And then people will say things like, um, that look at how white people push that off on our kids. Push what off on your kids? Could put push individuality off on your kids, push the fact that people can be themselves off on your kids. I don't understand how you believe that to be a bad thing, right? In a world where um, so many rappers are talking about, you know, drug drug use, lean, and and Molly, and, and and all of these things that really, really have a detrimental effect on kids and the choices that they make long term. How is Lil Nas X wearing a pink cowboy suit to the Grammys somehow infringing on? Um, your kids right to be in this world or somehow making this world um, less safe for them it's just so bizarre to me like I guarantee you if you went around right to every hood and asked every guy in the hood um, are you on this corner selling drugs because Lil Nas X wore a pink um, a, a pink cowboy suit <laughs> The answer would be a resounding no. The answer would be, I'm on the hood. I'm on the corner selling drugs in a lot of instances because this is what I saw the other men in the community do. This is what, you know, I was taught to do by the other men around me. But that is not a threat to black masculinity. That is not a, a threat to the, the very existence of black men. So these men atta are attacking the wrong thing. All of these men out here having children by multiple women, um, future, for example, um, don't know him personally, but I'm going to use him for example because his case is not an isolated case where these men have these children by multiple women and bounce from women to wo woman to woman to woman and not necessarily developing a relationship or cultivating a relationship with the children that they've created, you know, but that is not a threat to black masculinity. What is black masculinity? Look in jails and see, look at the jails across the country. And yes, it is partly to blame on legislation, but it's also partly to blame on culture, the culture that a lot of these men were reared in. And so you can't solely say that, you know, um, the, the, the legislation has led all of these black men to be incarcerated. Is that part of the problem? Absolutely. But is, is it the sole problem? It is not. It is a multi-tiered problem. And part of the problem is the ignorance that men like Pastor Troy perpetuate this belief that toxic masculinity, being hyper-masculine, not backing down when there's a confrontation, um, what have you, suddenly emasculates you and makes you less of a man. To me, in my opinion, it takes a real man to walk away from confrontation. You don't always have to flex and show how strong you are to prove that you're a man. Sometimes being a man is being a man enough to say, you know what, I, I have better things to do with my time. I have a lot to lose in life, you know, um, and that I'm not going to even waste my time on this innocuous disagreement. But in the eyes of Pastor Troy, excuse me, somehow that would make you less of a man. 
Um, I just say shout out to Lil Nas X. Congratulations on doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. Keep shining. Keep being yourself. Keep shining a light um, and refusing to let people stifle you and, and, and want to push you back in the closet where you feel like you can't be yourself. Um, you've come a long way. Um, can, what, speak, speaking of uh, openly gay rappers, can you can you imagine if Pastor Troy saw a Saucy Santana video? <laughs> oh my God, he would he would lose his mind if he saw a Saucy Santana video. If he thinks Lil Nas X is over the top, please, I beg of thee, anyone in Pastor Troy's general vicinity. Please find a Saucy Santana video and put it on repeat. Maybe that's what he needs for therapy. Maybe after he sees Saucy Santana, he'll be like, you know what, Lil Nas? <laughs> you know what, Lil Nas? You're good, bro. I'm sorry. Because um, Saucy Santana is living his best life unapologetically. I love individuals. I love people who give the middle finger to society and to the status quo and say, you know what? You don't get to put me in a box. And that is exactly what people like past I'm sorry, Lord, Lil Nas X and Saucy Santana do. You, you don't have to like what they do. You don't have to like what they create. I'm not even a fan, honestly, of Saucy Santana and the art that he creates necessarily. But I am a, a fan of subversive um, art. And that's exactly what he's creating, in my opinion. Um, having said that, um, leave your comments below. I'm really curious to know what you guys have to say. Um, as always, in closing, remember to live better, love harder, and think smarter. It is she, the cerebral demon, signing off. Oh, also remember to like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. And I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.